Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Bella Edgley and I work mostly with watercolour. Now, a really effective way of representing water with watercolour painting is just to leave the paper showing through. So I did these um, two paintings and I filmed, filmed the process and I'm going to run through how I did them step by step. Um, before I did these two, I did a few sketches in my sketchbook and the one on the right is a bit different with some trees um, and I like this one but I decided to go with this really simple one on the left okay so let's get started okay so if you want to follow along you just need um, a good quality watercolor paper or sketchbook one color a paintbrush and um, a knife like a craft knife um, I'm going to use Payne's Grey for this one and I use a different colour for the second one. Now it's a very um, simple and straightforward painting and there's different ways to achieve this so there are slight differences between my first painting and my second. Um, for this one I put the water down first and that's what I'm doing here. I've put the shape of that um, lake and the mountains and I'm just now getting my paint spray on my brush and I'm just making that same shape where that water is. And now I'm getting a, a clean brush with, with water and I'm just going to move that across the top and that's going to pull that paint upwards. Now it probably wasn't completely necessary to put the water down but in the end the um, effect is probably the same. You can do either. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling that paint up and I'm I'm making sure that it sort of fades up towards the top and here I'm kind of roughly starting to put in the shapes of mountains and I'm always running across the page I want the line to run quite smoothly from left to right and I'm just gonna get my knife now and I'm gonna draw in um, some shapes of mountains there in the background and if you do this when the paint is wet then you get this kind of very fine dark line and you can see the edge of the paint at the top and I haven't tried to blend it into the paper and that's just because I quite like the effect of this kind of brush stroke across the top there I think in the next one I blended it in and you know, there's variations on, on this painting you can do and it's all just experimenting and seeing what you like. So I'm just putting in a bit more of the Payne's Grey there just to make sure that that line where the mountains hit the lake is nice and dark because the paint will dry um, a bit lighter. Okay, so I'm going to do the bottom part now. I'm just going to start off with a bit more of a sort of detailed line to the left and for this one I haven't put water down first. Okay so I'm keeping an eye on the top and I noticed it's getting a bit feathered so I've got a flat brush here with some water on and I'm just going to run it across the top and that's going to take away some of that feathering that happens when the paint moves into the water. Okay, so I'm going to go down to that bottom part again now and I've got some more Payne's Grey on my brush and I'm just um, darkening that line. Now in this sketchbook I know that it's quite forgiving and the, you can move the paint quite easily afterwards but if you're using a different kind of paper you might need to work quickly so that the paint doesn't dry and you can still um, blend it in using the water as I'm doing here. So I've got clean water on my brush there and just by by pulling that, dragging that across that paint, it's um, blending it down into the paper. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this part off and I use my knife as well at the end, but I'll just put the music up while I do that. Okay, so that's it this is done just very simple and very quick 
Um, so I'm going to take the um, tape off now and see what we've got. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with this. Um, it's got a sort of graphic quality to it because I haven't blended the water at the edges and I kind of like that. And I've just got a different view of that here. Um, but I'm going to get on to the next one now. And for this one, I did it on a watercolour postcard, which is quite fun because you can always send it to someone um, if you get on well with it afterwards. But it does have a rougher texture, or this one does. I don't know if you can get ones with smoother paper. Um, so for this, I used a more black colour, which I made by mixing Payne's Grey with Burnt Sienna. Now, I don't do things in exactly the same order as the first painting, but I'm going to run through this with music and captions, just as a kind of recap of the steps that I took. Okay, so this one's done. I'm just going to take the tape off and I'm really happy with this one as well. So it has a slightly different look to the Payne's Grey one, um, which just goes to show how much variation you can get even when you're using the same technique and the same ideas. Um, you might want to try it with a completely different kind of composition, uh, but just thinking about leaving the paper white to represent the water. Now I hope you've enjoyed this and if you did then please hit the like button and if you want to see similar really simple watercolour paintings in the future and other watercolour paintings and tutorials then please subscribe to my channel. Okay thank you, bye!